Did you, did you prepare your uh, speech? I did not. Oh, dude, what's up? You need to get it together, man. I was hoping it would just, you know. All right, here we are. We're live. Yes, sir. All right. Joseph Tallarico, everybody, the legend, the one and only, the man, the myth. It's pretty good. Uh -huh. <sighs> what were you doing, man, before I uh, text you? you said you're just uh, I was uh, on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> Sounds riveting. What are you doing? I just uh, got done training and then I made myself a, like, I don't know what you'd call it. Like I got a pita, toasted it, put some goat cheese on there, some eggs, some herbs, some olives, boom, you know? Yeah. Shoot, dude. Yeah. All right, so let's chat movies, sir. All right. <laughs> let's go, dude. So what's yeah. up? You gave, it's funny, I should look in my, uh, my other phone. I still have my, my last phone that I think I had when I was still in San Antonio. Uh -huh. And a list of movies, recommendations, I remember. Oh, yes, I wonder if I can find yours. I re the only one that I remember is uh, Flight and I think Princess Diaries, I think you recommended to me. Not, not Princess Diaries, no. <laughs> what was it? Okay, for those of you who are watching, my favorite movie. Okay. <laughs> A Princess Diaries, but I'm pretty sure. No, 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 it's not that. I'll explain in just a moment. All right, all right. Okay, so check it out. So, okay, so if I had to pick my favorite movie, you know, it's hard to say because there's so many different genres. There's different, um, you know, depending on how you feel, blah, blah, blah. But if I had to just get rid of all that noise and just say, okay, this is my favorite movie, I'll go with Flight. And a lot of people don't even know that movie, dude. I still haven't watched it. Oh man, it's so good. See, the, the problem is the, the problem is is it has Denzel Washington. So people they're like, oh, Denzel Washington, it's a fight movie, you know? So there's gonna be like fighting and action, but it's not an action movie. Mm -hmm. It's just a man and his struggles with uh, alcoholism. Okay. Man, I love that movie. So good. Robert Zemeckis. He's one of my favorite film directors. You kind of follow directors too a little bit, right? Yeah, uh, just uh, just in the, like an extremely different vein, I think. Um, yeah, different style, I think, of movie making. At least now, I mean, uh, upon entry into like the whole world and and looking and scoping everything out, um, you know, I found all the. Uh, really well-known names Christopher Nolan and, and Wes Anderson and people like that but um, I think as my like personal likings developed I, I started kind of funneling into to new areas so I found a lot of different uh, sorts of directors yeah yeah I, I think um, I forgot that I mean I didn't do any prep at all to kind of look at directors names and stuff but I do remember that you liked you liked this director who who has a knack for kind of subverting expectations like you think it's going one way and then boom it goes another way uh, i'm trying to think of a couple of movies and like uh, was blue valentine one of them oh that's funny um no blue, blue valentine wasn't one of your favorites well i do like that film that's a derek c in france film um did he do house in the pine or something like that exactly yeah 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 dude yeah that, that guy's a good film director i like it yeah uh, just real quick about blue valentine that movie made me so pissed <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, that that's a very uh like a uh, loaded film because it's it's weird how you don't realize some films you, you really just don't realize how people uh digest a film and, and and how different it is from person to person because there's like it's like Batman versus Superman, that movie, because some people love the girl's perspective and some people love Ryan Gosling's perspective and like, and don't see the others. You know what I mean? They're like totally for this person's point of view inside of it and think the other one is bullshit. So it's kind of funny, but. Um, Man, 
and I remember watching that and just thinking, dude, this this girl is pissing me off because here you have this guy doing everything he can to take care of his family. He's a good father. He's a good provider. And she's getting on him about not providing, you know, not wanting more. And he's like, what else do you want? You know? And I remember kind of bringing that up to um, some girls that were in my class at the time. This was like, I don't know, several years ago, but I remember being kind of surprised that they're like, yeah, you know, like they kind of took her side in a way, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I guess since I'm a dude, I can relate more to the guy. I just mm -hmm. remember thinking like, why isn't she satisfied? He's doing everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's not out there like trying to make a million bucks, you know? I guess that's like one film that never, like, I, I think films really, really get to me. Uh, depending i guess I, and i don't know what necessarily it depends on but i think that's like one movie that i guess every time i've watched it i haven't really like been too invested maybe in in being swayed like to one side or the other i don't i, I don't even feel like i've ever thought like that because i feel like i've totally seen how like uh at least with this film um blue valentine i feel like i could see both sides pretty clearly like he kind of turned into sort of like a sleazy like didn't really care his hygiene seemed to like worsen and like just from a visual like standpoint and yeah and, and so I could kind of see her side but then I could also see you know your side what you're saying about you know her and her sort of expectations and yeah I don't know but. all right so real quick so flight love it now, the other movie is not Princess Diaries, it's Princess Bride. Ugh. There's a big difference. Princess, <laughs> Princess Bride is definitely one of my favorite movies. I, I love thought, it. I thought you were going to. you never seen it? No, I haven't seen it. Yeah. I'm, I think Maybe the, I director back Rob, to that. the director, he did um, A Few Good Men. Okay. He did more. He did, I forgot, but anyway, Princess Bride, man, that movie, I, I actually just watched like half of it the other day. It was on, so I was just kind of, anyway. Yeah. What, um, have you seen any movies recently? I've been watching, I've been watching a series, uh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> Shut up. Are you You're, serious? You ever seen it? <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. You've seen the whole thing? Yeah. Okay, don't don't tell me, don't tell me about it because I'm watching it right now. So, okay. No, man, I can't think of any. Oh, I watched uh, the octopus. My octopus teacher. I heard of that movie, and I I might have seen it, but it's a documentary. It was pretty good. I liked it. How? What was it about? Was it? How's it go? So it's about this guy, he's kind of going through a depression. He, he kind of, um, he had an experience, I want to say in Africa where he met these people and he, and he, they were so connected to the land and they were just so in tune. They, they were able to just see all these things that. Yeah. yeah was, I've seen, yeah, I've seen the, the, I've seen the trailer for it. For oh, that. okay. Exactly what you were talking about. Yeah. yeah. Like a literal octopus in like the trailer and stuff. And there's like underwater footage. Exactly. So what he does is he, he desires to connect with nature the way that they did. So he decides yeah. to just go swimming every day in the ocean. So he, yeah. goes and he ends up befriending an, an octopus. Yeah. And then it's just kind of like their story. Like every day he goes and swims and they uh, kind of like develop a friendship and, you know, Mm. things like that i liked it it was cool i mean I yeah blown away or anything yeah so so with you um you have some desire to actually make a film right mm -hmm. so, yeah what's up with that? <laughs> it's just a long slow burn <laughs> you already made one didn't you uh i've made films um nothing that i'm like really proud of like i mean i wish i could say i am really proud of one <laughs> one 
17 second clip that I've made. Um, that was part of like a more of like a it was like a 45 minute short film that I made for um, my friend Kelby. He makes um, experimental music and um, I did a short for projection um, for one of his performances and we did and showed that in Mexico City. So that was kind of like the highlight, I would say, of, of pretty much really anything I've done to this point. But the best part of that entire film was like all of just 17 seconds of um, you just one shot, which just happened to be like my favorite shot of the short. And then um, it's the only 17 seconds of the whole film that have these particular sound recordings that I got from um, in Mexico. And, and um, I don't know why, but that's just like all of the other parts of that film don't really like add up to me, you know? So it's like, <laughs> uh, yeah, just those 17 seconds have been like my my uh, whole shebang so far. But um, we got a question. What software do you use? Can we uh, say can we say what you do? Kind of like on the side or what? Uh, not really. <laughs> I'd rather not. Um, yeah, I'd rather involves what we're talking about huh we say it involves what we're talking about well yeah i'll say like so i make i make films for youtube um for other people um and for that purpose i use final cut pro so it's like very just um you know it's a very entry level kind of program um but it's great it is a great um you know software to use uh for a lot of different reasons but um yeah i don't know if that maybe does it does that do it i would yeah. like though to uh in the future move on to um <clears throat> different softwares though for my personal use man i like imovie the best <laughs> I I started, is like, that was like the first place i ever did anything i know but like because because i have uh adobe photoshop Premiere Elements, I want to say, uh -huh. and um, dude, it's you can do more things, but it's so it's so like it's not intuitive and it's not it just takes so long. I would rather just use iMovie, like yeah. I can do so much with iMovie. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, I'm uh, sure and I I, I, Pro is is that is like that version of iMovie. It's like. It, it they took iMovie I would say to like a very user friendly um, place, and really? it, but on a sort of level so, um, yeah. You know, it's, I, you know what I feel like watching right huh? now? Uh, <laughs> a little movie that I did starring you. Oh goodness! You know what I'm talking about? Look, no, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Because in a way, this is kind of like. Um, oh God making a little bit Dude, have you seen some of my old films when i was a kid no i feel like i remember talking to you loosely about you having made films when you were a kid well dude you know like i was a little kid i had my dad's camcorder and you know you know what i'm talking about can you see me right now yeah i can see you okay i'm just finding something real quick one quick moment, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's coming. Oh my God. Huh. All right. Let me try another way about doing this. Lisa, thanks for the questions, Lisa. Ask us some crazy things. She asked, she's asking, how much footage did you shoot to make only 17 seconds? <laughs> Uh, well, it took me shooting the whole thing to get that, that one, you know, the whole 17 seconds entirety, you know, it's, it's visual and it's audio and it took, I mean, the, the video, the visual I had before ever actually, the visual was actually, I had it before I ever even thought to make the film before any of the film even conspired. And, uh, before I had even spoken about it you know with with my friend and um 
And then the audio came very last. So those two things, it, it couldn't have happened without the two things. And so that would have, um, it took shooting the whole thing. So why, have I, why haven't I seen this 17 seconds, sir? The 17 seconds, it's, uh, it's on my website, um, but yeah, but the full thing will never be shown again. Okay, okay you ready to watch my film? <laughs> Fucking, yeah, let's see it. <laughs> I mean, I did it. I'm the one that did it, so, yeah. But I'm... Can you see my screen? Yeah, I see it. Oh, I can still see you, too. All right, hold on. Let's see if we can make this happen. Oh, yeah, boy. Here we go. Oh, God, dude. Showing like an old JT fitness video. Oh yeah, I totally remember this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that editing, dude, that I did with, on with iMovie on my phone. <laughs> Look at that. Right here. Okay. Oh. <laughs> you were so tired after this workout. Hey, you remember? You remember trying to like time it to the to the music? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, so I did all this with the with, with the footage that we did just on the i just on my phone. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like when I watch when I watch other a lot many times other things that are similar to this, yeah. I feel like they don't pair it to the music very well. Like there's <laughs> going on, but it's not like it's not coordinated. Yeah, there's different there's different ways to go about it. Maybe I'm just biased, but I like I like pairing it like that. You like it being on the beat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like the feel. Like right. slow. You know what I mean? Look, you'll you'll see when the music changes, what what you're doing changes. Did you see that shot of you on the uh, rock wall? I don't know how I did like any of this stuff. To be honest, I, I did that. I turned it upside down. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's all. And then right here, you're walking off. Subscribe. When it was about subscribing, yeah. What was, why did you make this film? I just I just like doing that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Man. Uh, wow. I don't even know what to say. I feel like uh, feel like my anxiety is now proof <laughs> and uh, slight headache. <laughs> I did the other one with you and me. Remember that? No, I don't. Forgot that but, one. What the heck, dude? Moment, I. I have a drone. You have a drone, right? Uh, the, the guy I work for has a drone. I don't personally own a drone. Oh, okay. Well, I'm surprised you don't have one. 
Why? What? Why? I don't know. You just seem like the type of you like the newest gadgets and you like to like have nice stuff and kind of. Uh, no, I mean. Is that one of your cats? One of your four cats? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, my cat, Mama. Let's see, Mama. Yeah. How is Roxy? She's Doesn't good. she like Roxy? Same kind, of, same kind of cat as Roxy, right? No. It's kind of similar, but Roxy's uh yeah, Roxy's what's called a tabby. I don't uh, maybe that's a tabby. This is a tabby. Oh really? Okay. Similar. Similar. She's got little white. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. They do very look very similar. Does she have white mint? Uh no, nah, she didn't. She didn't. She has white, I think, just on her chest and her her chin and stuff, but that's it. Um yeah, man, you're a movie maker though. Um you've been well, back up off. Huh? Year. I said you've been one. You've been you've been a filmmaker for many years. But I no, I don't. I don't actually like. And when it comes to working for other people, I enjoy having uh, all the new stuff. Uh, but because that's what they ultimately want. Uh, typically, they want some sort of end result that's very new age, you know. Um, but personally, um, I just bought a camera that's the last in the lineup of dinosaur filmmaking cameras. So. Well, I remember you had another camera, like a picture camera mm -hmm. remember that and you took a picture of like you or you and i yeah yeah that's a that's an sx70 yeah yeah that's cool is that Polar the camera you're referring to no i bought a um i bought the camera that i'm trying to make this next film with it's a um it's an Aricam lt um but it's like a it's a traditional celluloid 35 millimeter you know motion picture camera and is the purpose of that to get kind of like that vintage look um i mean so you'd be using like present day film so i'm not going to use like any sort of expired film so if i wanted to get a vintage look i would probably try to find like a expired film on ebay or something like that but or just older film stocks if i could uh because nowadays Nowadays, if you watched, you know, if you put side by side, um, you know, a, a movie that was shot on an Alexa or a red camera, you really wouldn't be able to tell the difference um, from uh, from footage that was shot on 35 millimeter just because of how great the film stocks have been pushed to this day. So um, so there's really no distinct difference to someone who isn't looking for it or doesn't know. Uh, so but uh, why do it is because there's um, to me, it's more personal, like it's more kind of going down there. There's a there's definitely a steeper learning curve, in my opinion. Uh, some people might argue that just and I could even argue it myself just because there's like an endless trove of gadgets and things that you can put onto digital cameras of today. Uh, but there's also a pretty significant amount that you could put onto this, but assuming you don't do that and you just take the face value of just the camera body, um, there's a lot you have to do. I mean, just between takes on a, on a 35 millimeter camera that you don't have to do on a red, you know, on a digital camera, you just press the record button and then you stop it by hitting it again. And, and then when you're ready to do the next take, you do that again. And there's nothing you have to do in between. And other than if you are making a film, you know, all the other stuff that filmmaking um, is comprised of. But with this, I mean, there's literally like step-by-step -step things you have to do with the camera between filming one shot, you know, or just even getting to the point of being able to press the record button on this camera. You have to load the film. You have to, you know, check the gate. You have to... Um, measure distance and you have to do all kinds of you have to just do so much just to get your shot um and so to me it's more of like um things are too easy in in this world so um it's just a, a aim at 
you know, educating myself and um, feeling more so like that was like, that was the thing. Cause like, I almost, I bought um, the, the phone that I'm on, that I'm talking to you on right now. I bought the 12 pro max because um, you know, I, I reached a point where I was like, man, I have these ideas. I have these scripts I've been writing for however long, like, I just want to get something done. You know, I just want to do something and, and kind of stop meandering about myself. So I was like, you know, I'm going to shoot it on iPhone because I've seen, I mean, there's tons of great things that have come out just on an iPhone. Uh, but then as I start getting into the psychology of it, I start talking, my, I started talking myself out of it. And then uh, because it's too easy, it's just way too easy. And that's not the type of, that's just not the type of person. And it's not definitely not the type of filmmaker that I want to be. So, um, yeah. Yeah. What you're saying, I think, makes sense but i think it, it i think it won't make sense to a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, i do think what you're saying makes sense from the perspective of i think it would tend to lead to better work and what and the reason why i say that this is something that i've noticed with modern day filming because everything is so easy there's not much thought that has to be put into scenes and constructing narratives and dialogue and this is something that I've, I've realized with older cg animation movies like those mm -hmm. ended those at one point were way better than normal film mm -hmm. the reason why i think that those were better is because everything had to be really mapped out and constructed in a way that was coherent and that told a story you know what I mean? Because the technology was limited. The same right. thing, this is something that I've been thinking about too with, with um, CG, special effects. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, I can be like, not that I know how to do it, but you know, uh, film filmmakers can. I could be like, what's up, dude? And then they can like change the color of my shirt or they can change the background or, you know. So yeah. you can just kind of shoot a scene and then change everything in post. Mm -hmm. Day, you had one shot it's like boom this is what we're going to do this yeah. this special effects is completely centered around that scene so you can't you can't deviate right as a result i think there was a lot more thought that was put into so ultimately to like sum up what you're saying and what i was saying maybe so that other people would understand more because really they're just hearing my like dilapidated opinion of why i did what i did but mm -hmm. what you're about is the difference between cinema and business you know that's really what it is it's like uh you know use a digital camera there's a few parts of it but use a digital camera if you're you know a studio and everything's mapped out because now it makes your life way more easy you know you're not trying to you know exactly what you're doing everything's probably storyboarded so if you're trying to you know, send a camera through a window and then down a hallway. And then, you know what I mean? Now digital cameras are so small that it makes things like that easy and very achievable for the people who've done it before with big cameras, you know? So it makes, that's where like digital is really kind of like, you know, that really changing the world of the business of cinema. Not, and then you get into picture quality and things like that. And it becomes like painting stuff in, like you were saying, your shirt or whatever is way easier because you try to do that with like a, you know, old 35 millimeter film. I'm that's, it's not going to look right. You know, there's a lot more involved there. You have grain structure and you have all these different little things that that film, those qualities that that film has before you ever even shoot it, you know, and it makes things a little bit more difficult, but, um, yeah, to go back to what I was saying is just it's more to me, uh, film is more creative and more based on um, uh, art and uh, more similar to say just like painting, for instance, or something versus digital being more so like still very much if you're it's it, it, it turns into more about you as a person with digital and whether or not you I think you know what you're doing or if you have experience using it, because um, I think like it can go. I think digital in the hands of. of um, maybe amateurs can't is less likely to go really well not saying that like magical things can't happen or or innovative things can't happen but um to me it's just art more artful and like more artistic uh and true to you know cinema uh as it were not as it is right now so nice yeah so um with your ideas, what, 
what type of things do you want to create? Like, do you feel like you have a distinct style that you kind of want to lean into? I'll give, I'll give you an example. So when I was, uh, when I was a kid, I remember when I was, um, like, I think it was like sixth, seventh grade, I had this idea. I wanted to be, you know, make films. So the idea that I had, it would be one shot, one continuous shot of a movie. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I, like, I didn't know why like filmmakers didn't do that, but now you're seeing it finally, you know? So you have like things like gravity. A lot of those scenes were just long and, and they're not necessarily long cut shots, but they're, they give you that illusion. Mm-hmm. So they'll edit it together to make it look like it's one shot. There right. was a, it was called Birdman, something like that. It was like one yeah, shot. they just did that um, more recently and it's, man, it's, it, it's just a product. A lot of, this is the stuff that I don't like. Like this is a lot of the stuff that I don't like about cinema. I mean, uh, the only person that I would, I would give a get out of jail free card for it is the guy who did it uh, more recently. And that's Roger Deakins on, on 1917, the new Sam Mendes film. Um, and it was, it was filmed. well, actually I just watched the Sam Mendes film uh, road to perdition. Yeah. Anyway, it was filmed to be like a winner and uh, and i'm just partial to roger deakins i i like him because he's been in cinema he's he's done both things you know he's came he came from you know analog um and um and so um but uh the aside from him maybe and and i was thinking when you were saying this that maybe you you just hadn't ever looked in the right place because although it is like uh, it's a new thing in a completely different way you know like people are and i i've done this myself working for some of the people that i've worked with where you know you have to do things like whip pans and you add sound effects and you kind of like you know match the motion and direction of images to make it kind of seamlessly transition right not necessarily trying to pose it off as a single shot because you know sometimes settings changes or whatever but um uh but there's a filmmaker a hungarian filmmaker who's been doing the extreme of what we're talking about um since i don't even know when he when his first film was but it's i mean he goes pretty far back his name is bella tar and he's probably one of the most inspirational filmmakers that i've i've um you know, come to love to this date. So, uh, and he, he's very much, um, very specific and, um, long, long takes. I mean, he's got, uh, there's a film called Satan Tango that's seven hours long. And it's like, I think it's like four shots or something, you know, it's like, it's ridiculous. Four hours, it's seven hours, but it's edited down or the movie is seven hours. The movie is seven hours long. Like, yeah, like I said, like four takes or four shots that make up that question here. Would you ever work with product placement in any of your future films (laughs) on your message or art? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see myself doing that. I do that now. And, uh, and it's like, to me, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm not a fan. Oh my goodness. You know, I was just actually thinking about this. It reminds me of a movie I just watched. I recently watched iRobot again. Have you ever mm-hmm. seen iRobot? Yeah. You know, you know what's funny about iRobot, just side note real quick, yeah. is so much of what you see in these future uh, dystopian kind of societies is happening. Uh-huh. Like, like those robots are like, go to your home. Lockdowns are in place. It's for your protection. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's, it's of course it's going to be for your protection what you know what i mean when when things like that start happening it's always for our protection never are they going to say you can't leave your house or you have to have this thing just because we want to control you no it's going to be like oh it's for your safety it's what always anyway side note so i'm watching i'm watching um irobot and it's it's blatant product placement but i feel like it was done in a way that didn't put me off uh uh-huh. Smith, he's got his like Converse, you know, and he's like, oh, these are cool. And he's got this Audi car, you know what I mean? Yeah. Robot delivering. But you, there, there's a way that totally puts me off. 
See, okay, so so this is how I think it goes down. You know, I've never been involved in a studio film, but I think that's what's happening now with a lot of films is that they're getting so much money from product placement is that what they're starting to do is they're starting to go to the products first and saying, who's going to give us a lot of money? And then we're going to build the script around that. Mm -hmm. like one of my favorite examples of this because I can't think of any other way that this would have gone down was with Transformers, uh, Michael Bay. Because Michael Bay, dude, I remember, oh man, I, he represents everything that I do not like. You know, like when I watch his films, it just, it makes me so like, I just can't stand his movies. Even from the beginning, I remember when Transformers first came out, you know, initially everyone was kind of on the bandwagon. Like, Ooh, Transformers, it's cool. But I was like, dude, that movie's the worst ever. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, now it's like kind of hip to not like him. You know what I mean? But anyway, yeah. so, so, so this is, this is what happened. He basically said, and th this is my, I'm not, I don't know this for a fact, but I don't know how he could have made this movie either, either any other way. He basically said, okay, who's going to give us a lot of money? Okay. eBay, they go to eBay. Hey, we're making this Transformers movie. It's going to be big product placement. So then he's getting all these offers. He's like, okay, eBay. And then what they do is they take eBay and they write a script around that, you know, because the first Transformers film, if I remember correctly, was about finding these glasses. And in the glasses, there was there was something that was like kind of stuck in it and it was sold on eBay. That might have been part. I don't remember. But my point is, is like that whole script was was kind of constructed around products. For yeah. example, like the uh, Beetle, the bumblebee he's supposed to be a volkswagen beetle but mm -hmm. Chevrolet came and they said oh well we'll pay you more money now we're gonna make him a camaro you know oh so yeah that kind of product placement i don't like i don't like when you you can see that the script is moving around the products i don't mind having a script and saying okay will smith he has some shoes boom we'll make him converse we can make him nike you see what mm -hmm. i mean yeah it's just plugged in it's not like centered around his shoes just because they're giving us more money yeah yeah that's a big difference i would say i think uh <laughs> yeah if we're talking about maybe new movies not even new actually uh movies that did it well though i guess uh talladega night <laughs> you know they they're oh, very I see that i just saw a long time ago they have like a giant, uh, at least like Powerade. Uh, Powerade is the only one that I can think of off the top of my head. But like they're so, they joke so much even about like it being sort of an ad that it kind of like negotiates you as a viewer and being okay with it, you know. But uh, I'm sure there's something, um, you know, in, in terms of packaging the film and whatnot that, that made it, you know, a part of the film. I was just uh, listening to something today. There's a guy that does the, he's an agent and he does the stuff for the Coen brothers and um, who else does he do stuff for? Coen brothers is just the one that comes to the top of my mind, but he's, he's kind of like one of the people that do that. So like they package films um, it, from all aspects, whether it's like looking at budgets and looking at um, actors and who, what, level of actor is a part of it um if we can have a group of actors that are you know a-list actors then you have a lot more of a kind of a pull you know and so you can do a lot more maybe that increases your budget or you know and so they i i'm certain that they do do what you're talking about in terms of like bringing certain people on based on monetary differences and negotiations so i don't like that no it's but it's like it's totally not what filmmaking uh where it came from you know it came from just like simple stuff you know film and life we got a question here yeah if a film was made about you what actor would you want to play you <laughs> see with me where did I that question <laughs> it have to be a really good looking guy you know because we want it to be as close to real life as possible. Yeah. Find like the most good looking, charming, charismatic, ripped, jacked, shredded, swole man, you know, okay. like manly man. And then, you know, use him. 
because otherwise it won't be believable. Mm. Yeah. We want that. We want it to be believable for the people. Okay. So you don't know, you don't know an actor. You're, oh, no, you're, I need time. I don't, you, know, I just, you know who I kind of, I feel, I feel like maybe a little bit similar to him. I don't really look like him, but I could see him. I could see like, you know, him playing me, let's say in a movie. Mm -hmm. I don't even know his name, but he's uh, Jon Snow from uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, I know you're talking about. He kind of has more rounded features a little bit, the way that I do. Yeah. Bigger lips. He kind of, you know, it's yeah. similar, but he looks different. But, you know, I could so, see him. So he see you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, because I don't think I could even, like, I'm trying to imagine him not as Jon Snow. And I, I, oh, his name's Kit Harrington is what his name is. Uh, and I can't imagine him playing any other, any other role but Jon Snow. Dude, I heard that he was uh, married to that chick, that wildling chick. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Like in real life. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, Yours. And I really don't know. I don't, I don't know an actor that I think. I don't know. I don't. I don't even know anybody that I feel like looks like me. Dude, come on, dude. Don't, don't cop out here. I got, <laughs> I got a recommendation, Caitlyn Jenner for me. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. All right. Now let's go, dude. What? Who are you gonna be? Oh man. Who's your actor? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. Um, oh, um, dude, you know who you kind of remind me of right now? A little bit? Uh, what's his name? <laughs> Is it Woody Harrelson? No, not Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson? No, not Woody Harrelson. No, no, the guy, the guy who, um, he was in... Wolves of New York? Is that what it's called? Uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, Wolf of Wall Street. He played, he played the dude that was like that top dog. What the hell is this? He was in, he was in a Coen Brothers film. Um, or was that, was that Woody Harrelson? No, that was Woody Harrelson. He, 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 recently he's been getting into politics. He lives in Austin. He doesn't wear deodorant. Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude. I, 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 lot actually uh so maybe um yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll go with that all right uh coen brothers like what uh one of my favorite movies is uh don't tell me darn it dude don't tell me don't say <laughs> i feel like i gotta remember i think no i know country, no country for old men Okay. Yeah, I didn't think you were gonna choose that one. I thought maybe you'd say Fargo or, or something. But no. I, I think like the gruesome, like killer kind of thing. I just like the suspense that that movie has, man. It's so suspenseful. Yeah. Have you seen Hudsucker Proxy? No. What's that? You should watch that. That's a good movie. Um. Yeah, that's a Coen Brothers film, but uh, it's super good. <laughs> Just watch, watch it. It's funny. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, definitely looked like a lot went into it. It's a pretty elaborate film. So, but um, yeah, I like the Coen Brothers. Have you ever seen uh, Burn After Reading? It sounds so familiar, but I don't, I can't, I can't think of it. It's a Coen Brothers film too, but. Okay. I'm not recommending it or anything. No? No. It's, do you know what Burn After Reading means? Um, like, so no one can find any evidence of such whatever was written? From what I remember, I remember looking it up after I watched the film because I was like, what did I just watch? And like, uh -huh. it means like you read a book and then you read the whole thing and you're like, what the hell did I just read? You know? Like, what oh, got it. It's like you got burnt and you just read that whole thing. So like that movie makes you feel that way. Like you're, uh -huh. watching movie and you're just like, you're, you're kind of involved and you're like, all right, where's this going? And then it's like, it ends and you're just like, damn it. 
Why, why yeah. I... <laughs> that's funny. That it's funny because some films like you know do that without naming their film burn after reading. <laughs> like but that's I guess that's maybe the one good film that does it. Burn after reading? I mean it must be if they named it that, you know. <laughs> but all the other ones don't have an excuse, but that one's literally named like yeah. you know. Uh, I feel I like should... No Country for Old Men kind of did that a little bit with the ending. I don't even I don't remember that movie that well. No. No. Man. I should watch that film as well, but well, there's a couple movies I want to see. I'm I'm real big on um I tend to like vengeance for some reason. Like vengeance Love. movies. Like I like 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 I like when they set up a antagonist and they're just like, you know, they make you kind of hate that person and then boom, they get what's coming. I don't know why. It's just so satisfying to me. Um, like for example, the equalizer. Have you seen that? Yes, yeah. Man on fire, taken, you know, those kind of things. So there's a movie that's out right now that I want to see that I, I hear is really good. It, it, I don't know who film, uh, directed it, but um, it, it's called Nobody. And it's got the dude that played Saul Goodman from Breaking Bad. Anyway, yeah. that was good. And there's an, oh, the guy who directed Equalizer, I forgot his name. He directed a new movie that's coming out. And I really like his films. Um, I'm trying to think of some other movies that he's directed besides Equalizer. I want to say he might have did the Apollo Creed movies, but uh, at least one of them. But um, he came. He 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 just came out with a new movie too called Infinity. It's got um, Mark Wahlberg and that dude that was in Tenet. Did you like Tenet? I didn't watch it, man. I that's I I yeah. dude. I I hate to. The- I was just thinking about how this whole conversation has been like, you know, like a lot of films that are um, a lot of people would know. And um, and I loved Dunkirk. I, I loved uh, Interstellar. I thought those two movies were done really, really well by Nolan. And and then I, I really all it took was me watching the trailer to like not like Tenet because it's just such like a silly concept that I just don't. I mean, it's. I don't know. It's probably cool to watch because it was done on like such a large scale budget. Uh, But the idea of just playing things backwards just kind of like just seems like super lucrative to me. I don't know. But was it good? Did you like it? Lucrative, like meaning like it's just a cash grab? Like, yeah, dude. Like, oh, Chris Nolan's going to make a movie and we're going to play everything backwards and we're selling Chris Nolan at this point, not a movie, you know? Whereas like Inception was like still like a very thought of idea. It's not like, you know, the idea of like levels to like a human consciousness or whatever, like that's not that far out. You know, I'm tons of people have probably thought things like this. Right. But, you know, they did it and made it in a very like uh, specific way. There's so much nuance. There's so much detail. There's so much this, so much that to where you can, it forces you to no longer feel like it's so generic. And maybe tenants like that too. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but, um, but I don't know. I mean, I, I'm more, I'm recently, I'm like very, very deep in like, um, in films that are almost aren't even films. They're just like poetry in a visual, you know, it's like, yeah. So I want to hear about that but before we do that let's just talk mainstream directors and what we know of their work and their uh-huh. favorite, your favorite uh works of theirs if you know like their movie christopher nolan yeah i can i can work backwards from like um well i'll start in a relatively like known space like so someone who i think does great works and is very much like pretty far especially now because of today today's world uh terrence malick um he did tree of, tree of life and his most recent film is a hidden life and um uh, but previous to that he did badlands and days of heaven um i think days of heaven is like a 1976 film or maybe that's badlands but um he's an older guy and he's been in cinema for a long time and he's um he's done a lot of traditional work but so like badlands for instance has sissy spacek and um um what's charlie sheen's dad's name i forgot 
same dude from uh, Apocalypse Now, but um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, so Terrence Malick is probably I would say if we're gonna call him mainstream, probably be like my favorite mainstream director. No, no, uh, no. Well, what I'm asking you is let, let let's go. Let's ask about um. Well, so for example, let's choose that guy, Terrence mm -hmm. Malick. Okay. Yeah. And out of his work, what is your favorite movie? Oh, okay, okay. I definitely know this guy. Uh huh. Oh, let me see. And I've seen Tree of Life. Yeah. Okay, so out of his films, what's your favorite? Um. <laughs> it's so hard. Uh, it'd probably be like, it, it'd probably be Badlands or Days of Heaven, but I'm kind of leaning more towards Days of Heaven okay all right yeah the, the ones i've seen of his are the thin red line and, yeah uh, the tree of life and i don't think i've seen any of these others so i would say a thin red line i like that i remember really liking that one when i was younger um, i've seen it one time i should i should venture to watch that again but um I've seen it one time and I, I remember very little of it um, but I remember how it was and I remember how it made me feel actually, which is interesting. We got a question here. I remember the end, the ending. It was so long ago. I watched it when I was a kid and I remember they raped some in that movie, right? They raped some girl in that film. Like they're like some soldiers out on the mountainside and like, I don't remember, uh. I don't, I don't, you know, to be honest, I don't remember much about that film. All I remember was, all I remember is the very end. Yeah. I remember there was like a seed and it was sprouting into me okay. symbolic of and i don't even know if that's what happened that's just kind of what i remember that's the only thing that i think i remember mm -hmm. that it's like the circle of life like you have war you have death and then you have right. growth that's very terrence malik okay so we have a question here though from somebody she's lisa really she's the only one asking questions here <laughs> she says if you could choose an actor or actress to work with who would it be <laughs> dead, dead or alive <laughs> let's go dead or alive uh i like dennis hopper um i think he did a lot of great work um who else do i like uh, is he the guy from speed he was in speed yeah he was the villain in speed yeah <laughs> um <laughs> that's so funny um Man, there's so many great actors and actresses, but uh, Walking Phoenix is, I mean, if we're talking like more well-known people, uh, Walking Phoenix is, is great. Um, mainly just people that like, man, are just like capable of anything. I love, I love like Joaquin for method, you know? Um, I'm trying to think of like female like actors that's the thing about actors and actresses is like that i almost hold them in like a different place than i hold like directors and and like movies themselves because like a movie can be whatever it wants to whatever whoever wants it to be whether it's like a studio packaging a freaking ridiculous michael bay film but the actors and actresses within it are sort of i don't necessarily I don't want to group them and subject them to like my opinion of that film, uh, you know, and those people because they're individuals and they're like, you know, they're doing something else, you know, they're right. kind of subjecting. Granted, that's the only thing I don't like is like based on their choice of choosing a film that kind of says a little bit about the actor or actress, but, um, but what they're capable of, I mean, is like astronomical differences from film to film. So, I mean, you could name, really almost anybody, any actor, actress, and I'd probably like a Matthew McConaughey, Sandra Bullock, Keanu Reeves, Sissy Spacek, whoever, and I think they're all great. Um, but oh, Brian Gosling. Oh, Brian Gosling, yeah. Michelle Williams. From what I understand, because he's in a couple of films that you like, The House Behind the Pines or whatever, mm. Blue Valentine. Uh, but from what I understand, from what I've heard is... Um, he's like spontaneous on set. So a lot of 
a lot of scenes that are in movies are a result of him just kind of being in character and just kind of doing different things. Yeah, I don't know. I, I often think of like, I wish I wish I like, I, it's really weird. I, I tend to be I think it's just my personality where I'm um, where I keep myself in such a bubble, maybe. Um, and I often just think of like, wanting to act myself a lot of times. And, and I think, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what it is. I haven't looked a lot, a ton into, um, you know, I haven't tried to be an actor, so I haven't like read all the books and done, you know, whatever, but, um, more so I just feel like, uh, a lot of the actors that I do like are people that I feel like I resonate with personally, where I feel like, man, they can really just like let it fly. And, um, I don't know. And I've, and I've listened to a lot of, if we're talking about Ryan Gosling, I've listened to a lot of Ryan Gosling's interviews and uh, Derek C in France talking about how he's directed Ryan. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I just think it's about being like human in a lot of ways and, and just, uh, what would you say? Like being adventurous in, in that while you're trying to do something and fabricate and play pretend, you know, I don't know. <clears throat> Um, we've been chatting for like almost an hour, so we'll, we'll start to wrap it up here, but there's something, man, I feel like you and I, we could probably just like keep talking for it. And that happens no matter what, you know, we just get together and start chatting, but, um, you buy a new TV. I want to go back to, um, you got a new TV. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were knocking that wall down. Well, I might. That's kind of uh, that's kind of the goal. If anyone's watching this right now and you know how to, or I don't know if I can knock this wall down or not because I don't know if it's a load bearing wall. So I don't know if my house is top of me. So let me know. That means that the wall of gratitude is going peace. Maybe. I've seen a lot of gratefulness. Yes. Okay. So anyway, real quick, uh, favorite Christopher Nolan movie. Interstellar interstellar why yeah, i'm just gonna make it quick oh fine uh i i, I think i my favorite... memento really probably memento i mean to be honest memento is a good film uh yeah i haven't watched following but um That's... i should watch i think i think i like <clears throat> i think well i don't know i'm just gonna say prestige like uh... that's a I like that film. that's a good one oh, do you like quentin tarantino as a filmmaker yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. Favorite Quentin Tarantino movie? Um, shit. Do you know his movies? Do you want me to name them off for you? All right. It, if you could recite them for me, I might be able to pick one out that I wasn't thinking of. Okay. So you have. Um... <laughs> Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Hateful Eight, Django uh what the fuck else what's that one that was launched well there's there's pulp fiction of course there's uh jack yeah. brown there's four, jack four rooms he did do you already say glorious bastards yes yeah um reservoir dogs that's the one i was thinking reservoir dogs i'm gonna have to go with reservoir dogs Actually, yeah, I wasn't even thinking i i've totally forgot about that film and that that's the first tarantino film i ever saw um choosing reservoir dogs yeah i think so um yeah uh, yeah yeah okay lisa are you there's a big what and I, I was gonna say that there was a big period of time around that time like those are the types of films that i like grew up on i grew up on goodfellas and reservoir dogs and uh once upon a time in america and so all these gangster films you know so um yeah that's probably that's gotta be my favorite tarantino film that used to be mine too. Well, actually, for, first I loved Pulp Fiction. That was my favorite movie of all time. And then I started liking Reservoir Dogs. And then now I really like I, I choose Kill Bill. Mm. Kill Bill. One, one or two. I'll just clump those together. Kill Bill. See that he gets a little bit too like crazy for my liking, which is kind of weird because I like like. I very much like like the most extreme versions of filmmaking, right? In in really any way, but I don't know something about those movies. Just I should rewatch those movies. Maybe I probably like them. I shouldn't even speak. 
Kill Bill is so good. Probably would watch him tonight and be like, dude, I love it. What'd you say? I said I would probably, if I watched them tonight, I'd probably come back and tell you, like, dude, they're incredible. But from what I previous times watching them, I was just never really, like, I didn't, I never loved it. Okay, uh, spit off some of your favorite movies of all time. In no particular order, no genre, just whatever comes to your mind. Movies that you think are very, very good. Yeah, um... I don't know where I should start. <laughs> uh, the Secret Garden. Um, uh, the last movie. Um, the last movie is the name of a movie? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Once Upon a Time in America um, is, is an incredible film uh, by Sergio Leone. Um, I'm trying to think of, yeah, this is just terrible. <laughs> oh, um, Alejandro Jodorowsky makes really good films. Um, he's got like the Holy Mountain, um, um, Fondo and Lise, uh, <sighs> Yodorowsky is just incredible. Really, any of his films are, are amazing. Um, and I know I'm just missing people recently. I mean, I've been watching a lot of like Andre Tarkovsky films. Um, I've been trying to get through one film in particular, Come and See. Uh, it's like a war film, but it's the cinematography in it is pretty remarkable. Uh, Old Yeller. I got someone whispering to me all my, all my favorite movies. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. There's, there's so many, um, and, and it's hard not to like think of the things that I'm trying to watch now. But I, The Matrix, I mean, was an incredible film uh, that was very well known. But um, I also kind of hate it now, actually, because I did too much research about it, and it sort of ruined it in a lot of ways. But um, at least yeah. from the the director standpoint yeah there's a lot of like speculation and sort of not speculation on the fact that it was a stolen script and that it wasn't as creative as the wachowski um brother and sister um or sisters um are they both women now yeah um yeah so but and you know at the time they they sort of lived in all of that glory and then it kind of like slowly somehow trickled you know to kind of bite them in the ass in a lot of ways um apparently it was like a lot of the ideas were stolen from um, somebody's comics um, from a meeting and everything to sort of make that comic into a film and a lot of just BS, but uh, it seemed pretty legit BS. And so uh, I didn't. You ever seen Naruto? Yeah. You seen that? Yeah. You, you, did you watch all of uh, Shippuden? No, I'm not a big fan of, of a lot of anime. Not really. Okay. Well, anyway, uh... I wouldn't know. What was that? I wouldn't know anything. If you were to mention something about it, I'd be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. But you did watch some of it? Yeah. Okay, well, anyway, when I was watching that, I was just like, dude, this is like the Matrix. Okay. Yeah, like they, it's, it's, it's like they took the Matrix. Cause, and then I got curious what came out first, you know? Was it the yeah. Naruto? So Naruto came out first? I, I don't know. I, I, I tried to look into it, but I... I couldn't like I wasn't yeah. sure if it was a cartoon because of the the manga manga or whatever the comic came out you know obviously before the, the cartoon but yeah dude, why are you not a yeah. fan of anime dude what's the matter with you uh no I mean I was like shit I I mean I grew up collecting Pokemon cards I love I loved Pokemon um I, I've always been more so like I'll find like my thing my brand or part of whatever it is whether it's anime or if it's this or that and I'll stick to that. You know, Yu-Gi-Oh comes out and I'm like, no, like, fuck Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, Pokemon is sick. And so that's kind of what I stuck with. But the only thing outside of that was probably like uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender. I thought that that was cool when I was younger. Uh, I just watched, um, well, fairly recently I watched Avatar for the first time. The whole first. And then I watched the, the second one where it's like mm. a girl. Mm. Mm -mm. No funny man it's 
it's better from um, like a production value standpoint, mm -hmm. animation and things like that. But man, so many wasted concepts and ideas. Yeah. All right, throw out a couple more movies. Give, give, give some recommendations that people can get a hold of. You're talking about, are those even found like on, are they accessible? Yeah, I mean, you can find, like, if, yeah, you can find and rent certain films by certain, like Yodorowsky, you can rent some of his films on, like, Amazon Prime or whatever. Um, <clears throat> what do you mean? Like, some films that what people can get a hold of? Like, like they can find them or? Well, like, maybe that's something that might be on Netflix or Amazon Prime or HBO Max or. Okay. Um, something that. You know, like, there was a film. The most recent like film that I watched that was like there's there's really two that I one's a lot better than the other one in my opinion but um they're really really accessible films I think they're both on Netflix if I'm not mistaken one is the platform and it's a it was a good film watch it it's very interesting it's like heavy on the edge of your seat the entire time um it's called the platform okay okay. And the other one is, um, it's called Swallow. Oh, I've seen that. The porn? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's, a, it's a good movie and a female director. And um, yeah, so those are the two, two newest, I would All say. Right. That. Okay, let, let, let's go genres to genre. Okay. Okay. The best. I feel best, like I'm playing hot potato or something. Best horror. Best horror. Yeah. Shit. I I I mean I gotta go with like Texas Chainsaw Massacre films. Like those are probably like some of my favorite like horror films. Um. Yeah. Okay. Or The Collector. That'd be like the only other one that I I enjoyed. Um, okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with. Uh, I mean, I could choose like the super. You know, the ones that you know people unanimously agree on are real scary, like Exorcist, something like that. But I'm, uh, gonna, say, I'm gonna say Insidious, dude. Okay, just, that movie is scary. I yeah, don't, I don't recommend that. But that is. Really good. Keep it, but if if we could come just a step up from from those films, I would have to say like um um house of a thousand corpses uh devil's rejects and um what's that other what's that woody harrelson and an old girl film that's not necessarily a horror film but they kill everybody and what's that film in tarantino he like wrote the script for it i think um are you talking about uh, from death till dawn no they're like bonnie and clyde in the film what the hell am i thinking of oh i know what you're talking about all of yeah. stuff that movie. <laughs> uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. No, not that one. Jesus. I can't think of anything, but whatever. I'll come back to it. Oh, okay. Um, That's okay. One kill. okay, how about action? Action? Yeah. <laughs> I just don't. I don't know. Um, <laughs> speed. You, you said a good one. Speed. Um, okay. Action. I know I got like a good action film um matrix is a good one yeah matrix is great dude i like kung fu hustle you watched that though didn't you kung fu hustle mm, is that the comedy oh no i'm thinking of kung pao Have you ever seen kung pao i don't think so where, where it's like an old film but they like cg that dude's face on it and there's like a cow that does ninja yeah 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 no i, I have hustle though i don't think last question what was the last movie you cried it would have been hidden life um by terrence malick hmm. man i can't think of one let me see darn i know i definitely cried when i watched uh, green mile that's one of my favorite films too uh, okay. A lot of people don't know Green Mile was written by um, Stephen Hawking. Is it Stephen Hawking? No, no, uh, Stephen King. Okay. 
same thing with Shawshank Redemption. Have you seen that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Harry Potter, Paul? No. I, <laughs> I like Harry Potter. I do like Harry Potter. <laughs> There's some good film directors that did, did those movies. Yeah. That, that's funny. Alfonso Cuaron, we should say. He, he, he did one of them, I think. Yeah, he, he's, he did Reverend? Um, no, that's uh, Mat- like Matthias. Uh, that's somebody else. Dude, that, I don't. That's, that's a good movie. Reverend? You're talking. Huh? You said the Revenant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Yeah, uh, I don't think it was him. It was this other. He was another another Spanish director, though. I always get those two guys mixed up. Like they did. They did Gravity, Revenant. Alfonso Cuarón did Gravity. Yeah, that guy. So yeah, maybe maybe he did do Revenant, but I think it was a different guy. Um. I think the guy, oh, wait, no, 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 you might be right. I, his cinematographer, I think, is a guy named Chibo. And uh, I think that's who I'm thinking of did Revenant was Chibo, but it, I think he might have just been the cinematographer. Um, but Alfonso Cuaron did Roma and e, um, uh, e ma, Tu Mama y Tambien. Yeah. And that's. No se encuentra. <laughs> no say that's probably my favorite movie of his is uh to mama y all right sir we've been chatting a good time it was yeah. fun uh, anything else you want to say yeah let's just get into the religious portion of this whole conversation <laughs> i've been watching all of them are you know it's a really good religious movie because normally i think Normally, I think religious movies aren't that good because, like, the you know, like, they're I, I don't know how to explain it. The, the production is just kind of low quality, but I watched one that I really like. It's called War Room. I like that movie. Okay. That's it, sounds familiar, but I don't think I've seen it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm biased because I believe in, I believe in that type of thing. You know what I mean? But I just, I feel like it was really well done. Sure. So, you're listening and you're uh you're looking for a good christian movie war room or tree what was that or tree of life tree of life i mean i feel like there's a lot of hot topics in that in that movie yeah because remember um i sent you that video about the the book of job yeah he's essentially yeah 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 well sweet man thanks for um Thanks for letting me on this thing. Yeah, dude, it was fun. Appreciate you, sir. I'll have to do it again. Yeah, I want to see your new home when you move in. All right, yeah. You got to make a crib. It's like, what's up, y'all? Tallarico here. Yo, this is where I think about my movie projects over here. And I'll make a, a wall of gratitude that says Paul's gratitude wall at the top. <laughs> <laughs> that no one will ever probably write on. <laughs> Shit. All right, buddy. Enjoy yourself. All right, you too. It was good seeing you. God bless you, sir. Bye, bye.